Hi guys, this is Boomer for Caravel Gaming, and in today's episode of the Magic 2014 Revenge Campaign, we're going to be taking on Ramaz. Um, so he is basically the final boss of the Revenge Campaign, and then we'll be able to move to the Expansion Campaign. So, let us show you first off which deck I'm going to do. I'm going to be a child for this one. Uh, no, I'm not playing the... Uh, control deck, I'm not, sorry, the uh, Eldrazi deck, I'm going to play Hunter's Strength. Okay, so the way I built this is just basically to smash face as quickly as possible. Uh, we have three rankers, the bane of all control decks everywhere. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus naught and has trample. When it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return ranker to its owner's hand. A Green Sun Zenith, which is search your library for a green creature card with converted mana cost X or less, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library, and then shuffle Green Sun Zenith into its owner's library, so we can get any creature card in our deck. Four Prey Upon, this is the removal in the deck, and I will need at least some. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't. A Fauna Shaman, which is a 2 mana 2-2 two two with 1 green tap, discard a creature card, search your library for a creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. Not incredibly fast, but it will let me uh, go up the curve quickly. 3 Cologne and Tuskers, 2 mana for a 3-3. Three three. 4 Nature's Laws, search my library for a forest and put it onto the battlefield. A Predator Ooze, which is a 1-1 indestructible that gets bigger whenever it attacks or when it deals damage and that kills a creature. Two Eternal Witnesses, which are three mana 2-1s that return a crowd from the graveyard to hand when they come into play. Really good creature. A Leatherback Baloth, which is a 4-5 for three, just really efficient. Elephant Guide, uh, the green counterpart to Griffin Guide. Two and a green, enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three, and when it dies, put an elephant onto the battlefield. Master of the Wild Hunt, incredibly good card. Mermaz has one of these in his deck. Four mana for a three, three. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a two, two green wolf creature token onto the battlefield, and then you can tap wolves that you control to deal damage to a creature, and the creature in return deals damage to the wolves. Fangrin Firstborn, 4 mana for a 4-2. When it attacks, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each attacking creature. It just causes a huge mess, usually. Especially in Two-Headed Giant, because this will affect Chandra's creatures. Two Hunt the Weeks, this is an expensive prey upon, but you get a plus 1, plus 1 counter on your guy um, before they fight. Vorapede, 5 mana for a 5-4 creature with Vigilance and Trample, and it's also Undying, so it comes back as a 6-5. Two Sentinel Spiders, otherwise known as Serra Spiders, big hairy leggy spider. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four with Vigilance and Reach. Two Overrun, make my guys bigger and stomp all over your face. That's basically the way that that goes. Two Rampaging Balos, which are six mana six sixes with Trample. Whenever I land into the battlefield under my control, I may put a 4-4 four, four green beast token onto the battlefield. So yeah, you make this, then make a land. Usually this is a turn 7 drop. Primal Crooks, or Primal Crooks, whatever you want to call it. This elemental thing. 6 green mana for an XX with Trample. It has Chroma, which means its power and toughness are each equal to the number of green mana symbols and the mana cost of opponents you control. Uh, what would basically be called Devotion now. And finally, Primeval Bounty. Whenever I cast a creature spell, put a 3-3 on the battlefield. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put counters on a creature. And whenever I land into the battlefield, gain 3 life. It's that thing Garrett cast against me turn 4 ages ago that just destroyed me. Now, what am I not playing? Number 1, a Crater Hoof. Now, I went back and forth about whether I wanted to play Crater Hoof Behemoth, but I'm not a Swarm deck. It's like, if I was playing an Elf deck, for example, I would just slam Crater Hoop Behemoth into my deck. Uh, but this point, at best, I think he's going to be like a 6-6. Six, six. I don't think there's going to be too much he does, and he's 8. It's a lot of mana. Uh, Savage Summoning. Can't be countered. It's basically to play through counter spells. It's not that good. Beastmaster's Ascension. Again, it's not that good. I'm not attacking with that many creatures, so it's never going to trigger. Pulse of the Tangle, I'm always going to have more creatures, so this is just basically a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. I've got more, I've got better stuff than that. Overwhelming Stampede is not as good as Overrun. 
Um, actually, it's probably better than Overrun, thinking about this. Yeah, Overwhelming Stampede is probably better than Overrun, so we'll go that way. We've got a third Overrun. I don't want too many Overruns. I don't have enough creatures for it to be that good. Enlarge. Oh, that's what, where the cat comes from. It's the Enlarge picture, I see. Ah. Anyway, target creature gets plus 7, plus 7 against Trample until end of turn, and it must be blocked. So again, it can be used as a removal spell, but it's very expensive. Staff of the Wild Mages, we know this, these are bad, don't play them. Garrett's Companion, I could play this, but I think ramping into bigger stuff is just better. Sacred Wolf has one toughness, and I'm playing against Earthquake. Quick Conform, Oak Conform, sorry, is not as good as Elephant Guide, and I don't want to play too many of these enchantments, because if you don't have a creature, they just become useless. And a Wormskin Forger, it costs 7. Anyway, let's try this out, and we are going to be taking on Ramaz, who has apparently a perfect, uh, perfect deck, but uh, as we saw last time, that's not really the case. And to be honest, I don't think in the uh, Revenge campaign, I don't think it improves. I think it's pretty much the same, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, do I want to keep this hand? Yeah, I'll keep it. I can uh, I can Green Suns for three on turn. I can Nature's Law turn two and then Green Sun Zenith for. Uh, what do we have that costs three? I have no idea, but I'll cast it for three because that means I can get a three or a two. And he's going to cast Exploration turn one, I believe. Yep. Plays his mountain, all fine. Okay. Let's cast nature's law, get myself a forest. Uh, well, Chandra's gonna do her thing, which uh, appears to be nothing. Oh, she has the firebird stuck in hand. Oh no, she does have a torch fiend. Okay, that's fine. I was hoping we could get at least some pressure on the board. Yep. Some land. Let's see what he does with it. Harmonizes. Draws three cards. Okay, at least it wasn't something nasty like a Master of the Wild Hunt, because I'm not sure we could deal with that right now. Right, what have I got? Another Rancor. Okay. Well, I'll Green Sun Zenith for the full amount, and let's see what I've... Uh, let's see what I've got available. Oh, I like that. I could go leather heart, but but he can't kill this. Yeah, we definitely go for the predator ooze because then I can just stick two rankers on it, and um, I don't think there's anything at all he can do about that, and it just is going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Lily's just going to continue making her barely limited quality spells. I think Muramaz is going to make probably Master of the Wild Hunt or something similar. No, he makes Mad Profit, okay. To be honest, the Predator Ooze probably uh, is a reason why you wouldn't make uh, Master of the Wild Hunt. Okay. Okay, so let's go forest ranker on this. Ranker on this. And make the Tusker. And uh, Lily's gonna pillar of flat. He never uses that mad prophet ever. Just never uses that mad prophet. Let's swing with the boys, and the Predator Ooze is going to go to 6-2, so... 
I think that that predator ooze is going to go all the way here. I can't really see how Ramaz gets out of this one. I mean, I suppose you could, like, quake for eight, quake for nine, and just kill everyone. But it ends up being a draw. I mean, he is mad. I mean, check out that beard on him. So flame slash to my 3-3 more than likely. That is absolutely fine. I have this eternal witness in hand. And there's Master of the Wild Hunt, which is absolutely fine because it doesn't do anything. Oh, if only I had a... Well, I will have another land. So let's make uh, Primal... Sorry, let's make Eternal Witness, get back Nature's Law. Yes, I do wish to use the ability. Cast Nature's Law, so next turn I get to play this Primal Crux, which will be a minimum of 11-11. Then I attack with this uh, Predator Ooze, which then goes up to 7 power. Cool. He's not going to block. So he goes to 21. Gets a wolf with the... Uh, I think this is the first time when I played Ramaz that that wolf has survived. Let's hope it doesn't come back to bite me. Okay, he's going to kill the uh, kill the flyer. It's not going to help though, he's still going to take a million damage. You might want to find a way to not take a million damage this turn. Computer's not very good at using these cards. Okay, he's going to rave desperately. And discard a forest. Okay. And he's going to cast desperate ravings again. And discard prophetic bolt. Well... Okay, so he definitely has Earthquake in hand, but it's not going to do him any good. Because check out my 1313, I think he is. Yeah. Attack with my guys. Prayer to Ruse goes to 8-4. So he takes 12 going to 9, so now even Earthquake can't save him. Oh, and Chandra just makes the 6-6 uh, six, six Phoenix as well, just to uh, just to get some rubbins here. Shiny. Okay, another wolf. Yes, you may. That is fine. And he quakes for... Some. My prayer to Ruse lives, because it's indestructible. How lucky. And now he's going to die a horrible, horrible death. Yeah, make Chandra's Phoenix as well, why not? So yeah, turn three green suns for Predator Ooze and then stick two rankers on it was enough to win. Who'd have thunk? Anyway guys, that is the end of the revenge campaign, or at least the original one. Next time round we'll be attacking the expansion revenge campaign, which I have not yet taken on. So uh, it should be quite interesting to see. So. Uh, Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. And this is Boomer for Caravel Gaming, and I'll see you next time.